Our theories is Alfi Khan and Classroom Management by Galilea Medina and Clarissa Martinez. Alfi Khan was born on October 15, 1957 in Miami Beach, Florida. He studied his bachelor's in Brown University and his master's in the University of Chicago. Alfie theory concentrates a lot in the student's well-being and the student's uniqueness. His main focus is creating a caring, respectful environment, including the student's ideas and not just imposing things to them. He is a strict critic of standard life testing, but rather focuses on the need to understand students' development. Examples applicable to school setting. When a student is acting out and behaving badly, he recommends having a chat with them first, explaining that their actions will make their teacher care about them any less. Khan's theory is pretty much centered on giving the children independence and including them in the classroom community. An example of performing this is asking the students how they are feeling. Most of the time, teachers don't like to hear negative feedback, but we should ask the students what they don't like about the classroom. This will allow for children to think differently about a classroom. It will be a place that is fun and inviting to their ideas. Another example is showing kids you respect them by allowing their opinion on what to read next or deciding the layout of the classroom or where to go on the field trip. This is beneficial because you are helping the children be more engaging in the classroom. A good teaching strategy Khan encourages is teaching children to care for others as a way to manage them. Allowing students to learn from one another and solving problems together makes students care more about other people. This encourages trust, communication, and sensitivity. Other examples are, instead of giving students your list of classroom rules, teachers should invite students to come up with some rules that they think should be used. When a student pushes another student, we need to sit down with the child and ask why this happened. The teacher needs to explain why it isn't okay to hit even when one is angry or frustra frustrated. Khan also talks about standardized testing. Khan doesn't agree with standardized testing and he encourages teachers to speak conversation and arguments as a way to show the students learning. A strict set of standards is not reliable because not all children are the same. Rewards and consequences. Khan believes that rewards and consequences are not a good method to apply in the classroom. He believes doing this won't make the quality of the student's work any better. On the contrary, this will give you rush work. It excludes certain children and ranks them. One example of a reward is letting students go to centers when they are finished with a certain assignment. This only encourages students to finish first and faster, but will not have an effect on the content of the work. Rewards and consequences continue. Khan also believes that consequences are not appropriate and can affect students' anger and desire of revenge. It is important that as teachers, we talk to our students and try to understand to a certain extent what kids are going through. The way Khan describes punishment is a way where the relationship is broken between two people. He also mentions that when teachers are punishing students, they show more authority instead of trying to understand the reason behind the problem being caused by a student. We can relate his theory to the PPRs and the relevance to education. Standard 1 states that the teacher designed instruction appropriate for all students that reflect an understanding of relevant content and is based on continuous and appropriate assessment. Competency 001, the teacher understands human development process and applies this knowledge to plan instruction and ongoing assessment that motivates students and are responsive to their development characteristics and needs. Khan believes that each student learns differently. Therefore, teachers need to be prepared and understand that development of children depends on each child. PPR standards continue. PPR standard number two says the teachers creates a classroom environment of respect and rapport that foster a positive climate for learning equity and excellence. Competency 005 says the teachers know how to establish a classroom climate that foster learning equity and excellence and uses this knowledge 
to create a physical and emotional environment that is safe and productive. As teachers, it is important that we have a welcoming environment for students. This is also refer referred by Khan, which his theory focuses on emotional and safe environment. Standard 3 states that the teacher promotes student learning by providing responsive instruction that make use of effective communication techniques, instructional strategies that actively engage students in the learning process, and timely, high-quality feedback. Competency 008B states applies various strategies to promote students' engagement and learning such as instructing lessons effectively using flexible instructional groupings, pacing lessons flexibly, flexibility in response to students' needs, including wait time. Khan encourages group activities so students can start caring about others and start building a caring community. This also applies to the fact that teachers need to be understanding about students' learning ability and how they all learn differently. The last PPR standard is PPR standard number four. The teacher fulfills professional roles and responsibilities and adheres to legal and ethical requirements of the profession. Competency 007B engages in skilled questioning and leads effective students' discussions, including using questioning and discussion to engage all students in exploring content extends students' knowledge, and fosters activity students' inquiry, higher-order thinking, problem-solving, and productive, supportive interactions, including appropriate wait time. Since Khan doesn't believe in standardized testing, he encourages different methods of engaging with the students in discussions, and other activities are a good way to prove students' knowledge instead of basing their knowledge in a multiple-choice test. We do have a video to kind of explain this um, a little bit deeper and summarize everything that we've talked about. <laughs> there is a, a terror that kids will feel good about things, mm -hmm. that they will um, uh, simply be pleased with themselves and therefore not work hard. That comes from that Puritan ethic that represents itself still in um, the social conservatism that dominates our thinking about education and parenting. But in fact, most schools are not at all prepared to help kids feel good. Quite the contrary. There is such an emphasis on rigor and raising the bar and higher standards that we end up with a lot of kids who are alternately bored and anxious because the education really isn't about helping them to feel like proficient thinkers who love learning. Instead, they have to memorize facts and practice skills in order to do well on tests. And that ends up being um, quite unengaging. And it has a number of destructive consequences. The more traditional and back to basics and test oriented schooling is, the more kids lose interest in learning and in the particular topics they're learning, uh, the more superficial they're thinking and the more the gap grows between the haves and the have-nots.